Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So last year, one of the biggest hits was this game, Supermarket Simulator. According to some estimates, this game made over $28 million. That's an insane amount of money. This makes it the second most successful game of last year, most successful indie game, really just behind Boletro. And this one actually started off as a solo dev project. So that's really crazy. Can you imagine being a solo developer and making $28 million? This industry really is crazy sometimes. And this particular game is a really interesting one. Some people look at this and they think that the game looks quite basic, maybe even bad, and they wonder how exactly does a game that looks like this find so much success? And maybe you are thinking that right now, especially if you're not a fan of this genre. A while ago, I actually wrote on my Game Dev Report newsletter about exactly this, about how some people call this a very janky game. And it does definitely have some sort of jank, but despite that, it found massive success. And again, very positive reviews, so the people that do buy it, they enjoy it. Now, I personally want to see why is the game so good? Why is this so successful? So because of that, I played it on a few live streams just to try it out. This game was very, very successful, insanely successful. And it is pretty much the genre that I really like playing. So yeah, I very much want to play it. So I want to play it just for fun, just because it's fun. I also want to play it because it's a very successful genre, so I really want to uh, analyze this genre and see why is this one so good. Because there were some people that said this game was extremely janky, but other people really love it. So it's definitely one of those that it might not necessarily be the most polished game, but clearly it is very polished on the things that do matter. So the people that do play it, they do really enjoy it. So yeah, I very much want to analyze that. So welcome to Supermarket Simulator. Start with a small store and grow to an awesome supermarket. Start by purchasing goods to sell and place them onto the shelves. Don't forget to set prices with a profit to avoid bankruptcy. Yeah, okay. Nice little supermarket. Nice little village. This is also one of those games that definitely has that look of those similar games. So it's kind of like realistic style, but nothing too special. Meaning, I do wonder how many of these things are assets that they picked up and how many are things that were made... Uh, from scratch, normal retail. Oh, there you go. People come in right away. Oh, hi there. All right. She just picked up that one. Okay, now I gotta uh, interact with the counter. What do I do? Oh, just click on it. Oh, so I'm I'm sitting here. All right, interesting. So the counter is like a a like a turret position. So I go in. So I gotta scan. So let's scan this item. And okay, trying to give me some money. So let's take the money. Oh, and I gotta give some change. Oh, nice. Okay, so I can really see why people find this so satisfying. Because it requires quite a lot of tiny interactions, but tiny, satisfying interactions. What happens if I give too much? Am I okay to do that? You can take money back. Okay, what if I want to be generous and I want to give like four cents more? Can I not do that? Okay, do I have to... Oh no, I can press space to approve. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just gave a uh, five cents extra. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's go. So that's, oh, oh, a card. All right, uh, okay. Um, so what do I do with the card? I gotta interact with the card reader. And I guess I gotta write the exact amount. Okay, so I assume that's that one. 5.98. All right. So I played for a bit and I very quickly identified one very clear reason why this game is so successful. Okay, so so right away, just from playing the game for five minutes, I would say the reason why this is so successful is because it involves so many tiny interactions and each of those interactions are very uh, tactile. Like you gotta actually touch things, you gotta actually do every single individual thing as opposed to just clicking here and it scans, gets the money automatically. The fact that it forces you to do all of these tiny things I think that is a big reason as to why people really like it, because it is satisfying to constantly hear that little click, click four times, the little money flowing around, the sound effect, that sounds very satisfying. Boom, there you go, another one, give me some cash, and you want just two cents, all right, nice, boom. Like I mentioned, this game was apparently developed by a solo developer, at least in the very beginning. So this is super impressive in basically two ways. So first of all, it's amazing how a solo dev can make a game that finds this massive amount of success, one single person making $28 million, that is insane. And secondly, this is actually a great example of the power of awesome tools nowadays, like I mentioned in the live stream. Nocta Games. Is this like, how big is this team? I'm curious. Was developed by only one person? Really? Wow, nice. I mean, yeah, given nowadays the, uh, the amount of tools that you have available to you, you can definitely have a single person being able to build something like this. I mean, this... That's part of the reason why I would love to make like an entire course on making a game kind of like this. It's because in theory, it's actually a relatively simple genre. Basically, you just need a character controller, 
just need a bunch of objects, just need an interaction system where you look at something and you interact. That's really the core of it. So if you take that and then you can apply all kinds of interesting themes on top, like a supermarket, a trading card game, a mechanic game, a house flipper, house builder kind of game. So yeah, just apply a theme onto it and you can have quite a lot of, you can, you can build a very interesting game with not that much uh, complexity behind it. And yep, over here for my little prototype, I made a little shop simulator prototype, which was actually quite fun, uh, building this little mini prototype. I built this in, I don't know, like five to 10 hours, something like that. Basically the entire goal was to uh, test all of the various tools that I made for my toolkit. So all of these tools, I used pretty much half of them in order to make this work. It was actually pretty fun. So yeah, using a bunch of things in order to basically have some shelves. On those shelves, I can place a bunch of things. So I can place some items on top, on bottom and so on. Then yeah, these uh, <laughs> little capsules, these are meant to be a little people. So yeah, they come in, I can scan the items and make a little bit of money. So yeah, it's a nice, fun little prototype of this very hot genre. So yeah, if you do, uh, initially I was actually going to make this just for myself, just for basically dog fooding my own asset, just to make sure that everything does work, everything is correct. But yeah, in the end, I end up uh, just including it. So yeah, if you get the asset, yep, it's right here. So if you want, take this one as a base and then expand upon it. This game is also yet another piece of evidence for something that I say all the time, how players don't care about assets. They don't care that you handmade all the assets yourself or that you bought a bunch of assets from the asset store. All players really want is just a fun game to play. As long as you give them that, then it doesn't really matter what you use to make that game. And in this particular genre, you don't even need to stand out visually. Many games with this exact same visual style have found success. In fact, people that like this genre, they specifically want this visual style. I think people are nested from the asset store. Yep, very likely, which once again, so this game definitely proves how Players don't care about assets, they just want fun games to play. <laughs> this game looks like TCG card shop game. Yep, there are a bunch of those that are insanely successful. So this one did make like uh, 27 million and uh, TCG card shop simulator apparently made roughly 20 million, so yeah. And this genre is very good if you're looking for something that can find quite a lot of success. This genre is definitely super hot. So basically if you're someone who wants to make quite a lot of, if you want to make a game and your primary goal is to have it find financial success, then going for this genre would probably be very good. I mean, me personally, I enjoy playing this genre, so I wouldn't even have to kind of force myself to do something that I don't like just to have a better chance of success. So yeah, if you also like this genre, then making one of these games definitely sounds like a great way because there's plenty of these games, which like I was saying at the beginning, these are mostly all about interaction. So you just need some kind of uh, interaction system. You just need to be able to move a character around, approach some objects, interact with those objects. And then it's all about what interactions you do. So in general terms, this genre is actually uh, surprisingly easy to, to make. Although some people do feel that this genre might fall out of favor relatively soon. If you think that, then here's my response to that. <laughs> as soon as I make similar genre is gonna fall out of favor. That's one thing that some people usually have questions like, okay, this genre is hot right now. But if I make it, chances are by the end it's no longer hot. And sometimes that can happen, but more often than not, these genres, if they have already been alive for quite a while, chances are they're going to live for quite a while longer. Like for example, nowadays, uh, there are quite a lot of vampire survival likes, but you can still find success by making one right now. It is no longer an insanely hot genre, or rather, there's now a lot more supply than there is demand, but there's definitely still demand for it. So, so yeah, whenever you see a hot genre, Chances are you can still uh, follow it. I think types of games will be on mark for two, three years, then most people will be bored and won't play them. I really don't think so. I mean, these games have already been popular for quite a while and they just continue getting more and more popular. Uh, I mean, like the oldest one that I can think of was probably House Flipper. And I'm pretty sure that was like 2016. Yeah, 2018, so yeah. This, uh, this genre has existed for at least since 2018. I don't know if this was the first one, but definitely a very, very successful one back in there. So yeah. So this genre has been uh, very successful for like seven years. So yeah, if I had to guess, I would say seven years from now, it is still going to be very successful. So, yep. So in general, I would say the main takeaway from this game is how it might actually be janky in some places. Yep. But it's very, very well polished where it actually counts. Okay, and more people, okay. What is that? Oh, is that pasta? And <laughs> look at that. Definitely uh, a while ago talking about polish and lack of polish. But I was saying, oh, right, the uh, polish. So the game is, as you saw over there, the animation, basically, instead of the items actually properly going into the bag, 
they just moved in because again the game definitely focused on polishing the things that make sense and not wasting time on the things that don't make sense so that is definitely a very nice lesson that this game by being so successful can definitely teach uh, that lesson which is focus on polishing the things that the player spends most time doing and it's not necessarily an issue to not polish the things that uh, they don't spend much time doing it makes you feel involved in every small progress your business gets yep that is definitely a very big reason as to why this is so successful how it requires you to actually do every task like if i just approach here just click the button and it would automatically scan get the money get paid and so on if it was just one action it would not be as satisfying so the fact that i have to press every button to get the credit card price the fact that i have to give the exact change that definitely makes it quite a lot more satisfying quite a lot more interesting to play because yeah so yeah it's interesting how sometimes you want things to be straightforward so you don't want your player to be forced to do all kinds of actions but other times you really want more actions more actions do lead to quite a lot of uh more interaction more interesting gameplay so yeah it's one of those rules that depending on what you're doing maybe more is better maybe maybe less is better yeah a bit of both so yeah. then on this genre there's also some interesting comments that pop out some people basically saying how they don't get how this genre is so popular because to them it is something that would never play and that is actually yet another very positive thing. It is the fact that Steam is massive. It has some like 300 million monthly active users. And all those people, those all have different preferences. So there's only space for all kinds of devs and all kinds of games. Personally, I've never played a game like this. I find it boring. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I mean, definitely is different people play different kind of games. Like a lot of people, like famously in terms of indie game development, a lot of people love playing platformers. And for me, I really do not enjoy platformers. Or for the most part, don't really enjoy platformers, whereas I enjoy games like this, so yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's a really positive thing, how different people like playing different things, meaning that there's a market for whatever kind of games you want to make. If you want to make very complex management games, if you want to make platforming games, puzzle games, racing games, whatever you want to do, there's bound to be people that really want to uh, play that game, so that's fun, nice. <clears throat> By the way, one thing you might have heard me and Steam marketing experts like Chris Sikowski say many times is how visuals are extremely important. And at a glance, it would seem that this game sort of breaks that rule. It doesn't look all that visually appealing at the very beginning. However, I would say that the game does not break that rule at all. In fact, it intentionally did not find success right away just because of the visuals. But I think the game game popularity from the start, I would guess that some... Actually, I don't know if it launched pretty heavy or not. Uh, so supermarket simulator. Oh yeah, they had a prologue, so that was part of it. I'm pretty sure that that prologue was insanely successful and people loved it as soon as they saw it. Because, yeah, by the time it released, they already had 70,000 wishlists. But before that, look at that, just 200, 500 wishlists. So it definitely did not blow up at the start. I'm pretty sure it blew up when this one was released. 26 January, 24. 26 January. Yep, there you go. So basically, as soon as they launched the prologue, until then, they had like uh, 3,000 wish lists. So not necessarily a huge amount. But then they launched the prologue. People really enjoyed the prologue, which, yeah, prologue nowadays, that's really just a demo. So as soon as they launched the demo, as soon as people were able to play the game and see all of these various interactions, then people really liked those. And that's when it really blew up. So, yeah, basically went there. And yeah, from January... Then like uh, a month and a half after that, they released. So in that time, they went from 2,000 wish lists to about 70,000 wish lists. Then they launched it and yeah, just kept blowing up after that. So, yep. How it found popularity? The answer seems to be with a very solid gameplay loop, with a very solid um, demo. Just made that and then things just blew up from there, which was fun. So yep, the visuals did not help it, but the really awesome demo, that one did help quite a lot. Now, personally, I would advise you to not rely on this. If your gameplay is not as good as this, if it does not connect with players as well as this game, if so, then you might as well get stuck on this level, which would not help you find success at all. So yes, marketing is very, very important, and visuals are extremely important. My advice is definitely to still make sure your game looks good, even if this game sort of seems to find success despite of it. I highly encourage you to go watch the free videos that I made with Chris Zukowski. These are super detailed, they've got a ton of marketing knowledge. This is definitely a thing you must know nowadays. So definitely go ahead, make sure you watch these videos to greatly increase your odds of finding success on scene. Another interesting thing to learn about from this game is on the topic of AI and how exactly do gamers feel about it. 
Fun game capsule is AI generated. Yep, that is correct. The uh, little capsule image is indeed AI generated. And yeah, that is definitely a very uh, touchy subject nowadays. But yeah, based on the results of the game, it kind of goes back to the same thing as about assets, which is how players don't care about assets. They just want fun games to play. And over here, players don't really care that this was made with AI. Some developers really hate AI. And I can understand that, I can understand that point, but players, they just want fun games to play. So yeah, the fact that this is AI generated definitely did not impact this uh, this game at all. Yeah, it was still very successful, okay. So how did this supposedly janky game find so much success? The answer is because it's not really janky, at least none of the things that actually matter. The game has some very satisfying gameplay. The moment to moment gameplay of stocking the shelves, giving out the cash, the change, charging a card, all of that is all quite tactile and very satisfying. Then the meta progression of slowly making a little bit more money, buying some more upgrades, hiring people, all of that is very satisfying. So the game has a very satisfying core gameplay loop every 60 seconds, all very nice, and also a very satisfying meta progression. So every single day you make more money, more upgrades, so the whole thing, basically two very successful, very good gameplay loops. Can summarize the points that make this game successful in your opinion? The answer is, it has a lot of very satisfying interactions, and it has polish where it matters. So the game might seem visually junk, uh, janky, but it does sell an interesting fantasy, building your own supermarket. It does have the nice progression that appeals to so many like idle games, iterative games, where you are constantly growing, constantly making a little bit more money. It always takes just a little bit more to be able to afford the next upgrade, the next thing. So it has those tiny incremental upgrades and every single action, every single action from the day to day, like the core game loop on every 10 seconds, every 30 seconds, it is very satisfying. Just going around, uh, checking things, giving a uh, change, individual change, all of those tiny actions, those all feel quite satisfying. So yeah, put them all together. So the tiny day to day actions coupled with the grand uh, gameplay loop of constantly iterating, constantly improving your store, Put those together, and yep, the game is definitely uh, quite successful. And while it might indeed be janky in places, the game is very, very well polished in things that do matter. So basically, let that be a lesson to you on the importance of polish. Polish is very important everywhere, of course, but also mainly on the actions that your player does over and over again. So if you have limited time and resources, like you probably do, if so, then make sure you prioritize those repetitive actions that the player do as much as possible. Make sure those are as satisfying as you can make it. Alright, so I hope you found this deep dive interesting. I hope you yourself will eventually make one game that finds as much success as this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.